Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and the knitting community that we love. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am one of your hosts for today. I am Dawn. I am frivolous. And I am number fourth of eight in our family's birth order. And I'm your other hostess for today's episode. I am Penny. I am the oldest of the eight children. We just want to give a hearty shout out and welcome to our returning viewers. Thank you so much for making us a part of your weekly viewing time. As always, we hope that you take away a nugget or two from our experiences and share them with others in the community. And for those of you who are first time viewers, we're so glad you yeah. stopped by. We're hoping that you'll find our episode segments to be useful, helpful, insightful, and perhaps maybe a bit entertaining. So without further ado, grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a hearty sense of humor because <laughs> we're about to start and embark upon episode 41. Take it away, Dawn. I said I was a host, <laughs> not a hostess. <laughs> Oh man, and I, and I have to be entertaining. This is going to go nowhere fast today. We'll look at that too. Hey, I like your shoulder pads. <laughs> Do you remember shoulder pads? I loved them. Um, I still believe I have a couple of blouses with shoulder pads. I, I feel you stepping on my toes like they may be out of style right now. Um, <laughs> Yes, actually, there are just some days where you can't wear anything around your neck or around your shoulders. And should I try to get my feet up around my neck? I be permanently injured, damaged, and paralyzed. So what I am wearing today are my Hearts of Fire socks. And this is a pattern by Babs Osherman. And it's knit in the Behind the Pines February 2018 Yarn of the Month. Um, fiber. It's a fingering weight fiber. But Dawn, I just have to tell you, this is a perfect example of when you use a busy yarn, you lose the pattern. Do you see those vague, very faint eyelets there? Those are all hearts. So once again, nice fiber, wrong pattern. Yeah. I gave them a $4 sign on the frugalometer for the fiber and a $1 sign for the pattern. And I knit them on a size one. Very nice, but you are right. You couldn't see that pattern. No, you can't. And I really like the pattern. I, um, yeah, I can't even show it to you because it doesn't show up because of the busyness. So lesson learned, of course, this was so 2018. <laughs> um, but again, um, if I can say this, wasted time because you can't see the pattern. So, <sighs> but it's not nearly as pretty as what you're wearing and the accoutrements that go with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still can't spell accoutrements. Okay, this is <laughs> Therapy by Laura Ayler. Mm -hmm. um, we did this as part of a mystery mania cl class. I took at Magpie Fiber, Magpie's Cottage in Sheboygan Falls. The yarn is Julie Asselin's Lizu fingering. And I would tell you the colors, but they're in French and I cannot tell you them. So <laughs> you'd have to look on my project page on Ravelry or send me an email and I gladly share those. Um, it was knit on a US six. The pattern calls for a five, but Amy, who is our teacher, suggested I do a six. Um, I really like Julie Asselin's yarn. She's a Canadian indie dyer. And then look at this. I am so bougie. <laughs> you are bougie. <laughs> a shawl cuff. I'll talk more about the Etsy shop um, but in a little bit. But it's the Felted Garden Etsy shop, the designer's Marsha Ward. I saw these talked about on the Flock Around the Table podcast, and I went right away after I watched their podcast, I went to the Etsy shop and they were sold out. So I just sent her a message saying, um, you know, please let me know when they go back in the shop. And she did. And so I got two of them, both of them black. This is uh, kind of a coarser leather. The, uh, the other one's a black suede. 
Um, but later on in honorable mentions, I'll talk a little bit more about that Etsy shop. But I like this shawl. I kind of forget about it. Um, but when I saw it, I'm a sucker for that red. Yes, you are. And I'm hoping now the shawl cuff, from what I hear from people who wear them, is that's going to keep the shawl in place as opposed to constantly having to um, redirect it or reline it up or whatever all those fancy words are. So you look ravishing. Ravishing. Yeah. I can't do that either. Okay. I sound like I have a sinus infection. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, anyway, let me just quickly mention what Opal is wearing. She is wearing the Levity shawl, and this is a shawl that I knit for our son and daughter-in-law's wedding in the colors of her wedding. Um, it, I wore it over a black dress. I thought it was very pretty. Um, it is by Kelly McClure, and I knit it in the Dizzy Littis Dizzy Lettuce <laughs> Oxometer. Oh my goodness. Dizzy Lettuce Oximeter Fingering Weight Yarn in the two colors, Gilted and When Doves Cry. Just a pretty, pretty shawl. And I gave it four dollar signs on the frugalometer for the fiber. And then I gave it a one dollar sign for the pattern. And I knit that on a size seven. Yeah, that was stunning. We should somehow find a picture of you wearing that and put that in sometime. Oh, well. Yeah, it was really flattering okay. against that black dress. So. Thank you. Yeah. And um, Miss Ruby, look at you can almost see her private parts. <laughs> look, I'm thinking, looking at it again. I'm going to have that one coming. <laughs> I would have looked you off earlier. <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, I'm going to have to change the rating of this podcast. <laughs> Okay, without looking down here. Okay. <laughs> Look down there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to be fired. Next week, it's just going to be the frugal podcast. <laughs> you would like this as a child, too. So there's no changing you now. <laughs> oh, heavens. Anyway, um, now I have to totally think uh, her name, Miss, Miss Ruby, <laughs> is wearing the Kelso shawl. That's a pattern by Helen Stewart. It was not part of the Shawl Society. It was a, a collection that came out for the Fiber Co. And she was one of the designers. Um, but that is Road to China Light um, by the Fiber Co., which is a fingering weight. Um, you and I bought most of those colors when we went to the Madison Knit In. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2018. They had um, two of the colors and I just had to order the third. Now we bought that from a vendor and I did not write down who we bought it from. Um, it is on a US 7. And I love the feel of Road to China Light. It has that little silky component to it, which makes it drape, which makes it drape, but you can almost kind of see a sheen to it as well. I don't wear it very often. And I don't know why, because I like the colors. Um, so I, I just need it. to um, put it in my rotation a little bit better. But um, Frugalometer, somebody said last week I didn't use the frugalometer, so I'm going to try hard. Um, the frugalometer for pattern two. That's just a random number I come up with in my head. Um, and I didn't look to see the price of Road to China Light, so I'll call it a two, three. I don't know. My frugalometer, it would be a four to a five. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Because I've knit with the fiber company's fiber before on oh. my frugalometer. Not yours. No, well, on yours, it's like a two. But on mine, it's like, <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll split in the middle. How's that? <laughs> so on a frugalometer, the yarn is a three. <laughs> uh, so what I see your hands are busy down there. So what is on your needles? All right. So in the spirit of transparency, um, I just started posting for those of you who are on Instagram hashtag 45 hats 45 designers every other day the hat is coming up i'm featuring it and i went to post hat number two <laughs> hat number two was given away before <laughs> i took a picture of it so i cast on another hat number two and this is if you'll take a look at it's black so it's kind of hard to see it is the Double Knit Mariner's Cap by the Siemens Church. I bet I have knit 
a dozen of these hats. I like, I really like it because it's double layered thick and all my guys and my husband like it. They say it's warm. Um, so I just cast it back on in my Cascade 220 Superwash in the jet colorway from my stash. And I am literally using stash pieces and just piecing it together. Um, and then I will take that picture. It should be off the needles today so that I can post this evening and get it up. I'm knitting it on a size nine. And I add a little bit of length to it because my guys like to have a rib over their ears. And so that's what I'm working on. It gets a $1 sign on the Frugalometer for both pattern and fiber. Is that pattern still available? Yes, it's on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, I'm going to do that. I remember years ago I tried doing it and I got frustrated because I didn't understand double knitting at the time. Right. Now for new knitters, I would definitely encourage you to try this, but if you think you're going to get it done in three days, multiply that by three because this double knitting is time consuming because you are constantly moving your yarn to the front, slipping, moving your yarn to the back. So there is a lot of movement. You're not going to get much yardage tra um, traction on this. Go slow. You should show the how the, the fabric separates for people who don't know what double knitting is. I sure will. So you can see now it just looks like a tube, right? But let me show you how I can take each layer and separate it. It all hinges on my needle. So you can see my needle under that row. That row holds all my slip stitches. My slip stitches never get knit. Yep. So it has, and you kind, it kind of um, grows from the back side forward. So in the beginning, it looks wonky. You just have to press through it. And I'll, and I'll share a little bit on what I learned this week because it had to do with this hat. Okay. Yeah, during lessons learned. So what are you knitting? Well, this is impressive, isn't it? Man, that is a nice rib. It's a nice two by two rib. <laughs> I am doing, I just started the Blurry Furry, no, Blurry Flurry by... Um, Oh, the gals at Cozy Up Knits. Yeah. And if you've not watched their podcast, they're four sisters from Canada. And there they all are. Oh, they're and very cute. They are. And they're all wearing the same hat. The difference is the length of the brims. And this was in, I believe, collaboration with a Canadian dyer called Ginger Snap That. And they did kits. I was not able to get a kit the first round, but I was able to get one the second round. Now, um, I bought a kit that included a mini skein of black and then look at that. Oh, how fun. Yeah. So that's called um, Hey Soul Sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go for the longer brim. So I'm just going to knit the two by two ribbing as long as this black yarn holds out. And then I will connect starting on the outside of this ball so that the pink comes toward the top. And it came with a pink pom-pom. <laughs> and my Canadian friend, Miss Norma, sent Aww. me a progress keeper from Ginger Snap That. It's just a little I bunny. Did that. So okay. it had to go on Ginger Snap Yarn. Well, of course it so, did. And I may have bought another kit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, same thing, but in purple. So um, the only thing I'm doing different is a call for a one by one rib where you knit through the back loop. Okay. And I'm doing a two by two because I want it squishier, if that is such a word. Oh, I believe so. Um, and because it's going to be a long brim um, so that you can fold it over, I am looking forward to that. So literally, this will become my car knitting because I tried brioche for car knitting and that didn't go so well. So. <laughs> kind of difficult to brioche while you're driving. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you know, uh, you purchase while you're driving, but brioche must be a real challenge. I need a car that just goes by itself so I could knit. That would be nice. <laughs> all right. What else do you have on your needles? Oh, all right. I got checked last night during knitting with the aunties and my sweet little niece our sweet little niece said aunt penny 
how are you doing on your Audrey's card cardigan? And I will tell you, I am about 15 minutes from being finished, but I put it down to knit this hat number two. So I just have to bind off. Um, it is, it's, oh, yeah. it's done. I mean, I have it all finished. Um, it looks a bit wonky right now. And I think that's because of the way that I'm knitting the, the collar. So anyway, yeah. I will cast off as soon as I cast off this hat. And then I haven't selected buttons yet. So Miss Brianna's buttons I thought were very nice. I want something more monochromatic in this same shade. I don't want them to be um, the attraction of the sweater. So it should be cast off this evening if I get some knitting time. If not, definitely soon. And that is by Elizabeth Smith. And can I say this? I don't know Miss Elizabeth. But this was the first cast along, or knit along I've ever done with her. And Dawn, I just have to say, she's a very good teacher. She provides a lot of support. And what I like about it is there were several places where she actually explained why. And you know, you and I both want to know the why behind things. I would encourage anyone to do a knit along with her. I found it to be very nice. And on the frugalometer, it was of great value. So, yep. What are you... Uh, working on beside your hat well let's talk brioche <laughs> oh and it's in my bag by miss sandy oh. and and if you can see it she sewed in a ziplock bag for penny and i <laughs> so that is priceless miss sandy <laughs> you rock it is it is um this is the blended brioche baby blanket and i don't say that slow because i'm having stroke like symptoms um i say that because that is a tongue twister for me now mm -hmm. it doesn't appear i've done much since last week because i've done it four times oh yeah. over here you so my oh, trouble is coming yeah so you definitely see the brioche now better especially in the pink that's one color brioche i've introduced the second color and let me show you that side. You can see the gray a little bit better there. Oh, yes. I like it. I but like I'll it. tell you where my struggle is. It's at the ends where you just have four stitch garter edges. Uh -huh. I want to make sure that when that gray comes over, that it looks nice at that connection point. I don't want it to be wonky because then it'll pull wonky. Oh, we both used wonky today. So... <laughs> I've torn it out four times to get back down to that gray to make it look nice. And this will be my last time. If it doesn't look good, and it, I just saw another error. Oof. My guess is I will pull out the gray and just make it um, half pink, half gray. Well, let me ask you this. Are there any videos on YouTube, any um, brioche classes for how to join a second color and make it look nice? Well, I've seen just generali generally how to how to attach a second color and I do that in the round but it's that carrying of that gray uh, up the side because you know you just slide the pink or slip the pink um yeah I and there's know. no border that is the border yeah. so it's not like you're going okay well so ooh. we'll see um it would be pretty all in pink or half pink half gray or I need to stop over analyzing. I just saw another error. Do you see it? I'm going to have to tear it out. Uh, I don't believe. Is it down at the bottom? That whole row is off. Do you no, see that? You I can can't, see, I can't see it. Can, can you see it that way? Oh, you can see it there. Mm -hmm. That whole row is off. Oh, maybe it just needs to be set aside for a while. Oh, now you really yeah. see it. You a baby blanket up until high school graduation. <laughs> it doesn't have to. Well, at least I think you can. Oh, that is frustrating. All right, I'll be frogging. Okay. I might have to put that into timeout for a little bit. Sure. No, no fault of the pattern, mind you. But the um, designer is Lavanya Patricella. For anybody who is interested in beginning brioche patterns, she's got one color brioche, two color brioche flat. She's got a very nice cowl pattern. Um, and that's the pattern I use when I teach um, brioche in the round. So I really like her. Um, I'm using this Nako, I assume is how you pronounce yarn. It mm -hmm. is a um, 
it's called Elite Baby. It is 100% acrylic and it's beautiful. It's kind of that tonal pink and I have the tonal gray as well. So um, you may not see this blanket for a while again. Um, <laughs> if a February gets here and the baby's born, I may just have to buy something and promise this for high school graduation. I like the way you think. Okay. So kind of takes the pressure off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I have to tell you, it must have been the week of tearing out. I love the Thorn Cowl by Laura Ayler. Yeah. Four times I started and ripped that thing out this week. So I just, I just frogged it and took it off my Ravelry and everything. I don't think I was picking the right yarn. Oh, um, lots of wraps and turns. And I think those have to look nice. The I wraps do. and turns. And um, yeah, so I, I will definitely try that again. Um, I have a gradient pack I bought from Leading Men Fiber Arts mm -hmm. the last time I went to their trunk show. So maybe I will start that over. But that's, that's two now projects I've had to frog. Well, you know, you've been working on some complex projects. Maybe it's just that your brain just needs a break. Yeah. For simplicity's sake. Maybe like in Mexico. <laughs> no, Calgary. We're going to Calgary, right? But not when it's colder. Oh, my goodness. Dawn, you've got woolens to wear. I know. Miss Norma, I'll come in the winter. <laughs> Anyway, oh, by the way, I don't think we've been invited. Oh, well, um, the, I have two other projects on my needles. I'm not even going to talk about the wingspan because I have literally done nothing. And the only thing I've done for the crocus cardigan is moved it. Um, it is exactly, <laughs> it's exactly where it was the last time. However, it is this week's project. Um, I am hoping to have more knitting time this week. I hope to get that finished and get it situated because I'm trying to sort out all my Christmas gifts and get those in the mail. And this pattern, I have to tell you, I like it. And what I like even more is that Valley Yarns that uh, it's in um, a silk blend fingering weight from Webs. I like it. You all know I bought it for um, Tenacity and I think I might buy more. I like the color. Um, but I just like working with it. I am knitting that on a size. Let me look. I have a tendency to forget that. Um, I am knitting on, oh, sizes three and four. I forgot about that. Um, on the frugalometer, it got three uh, dollar signs because the pattern for tenacity had a silk blend and the suggested fiber on my frugalometer was five dollar signs and I wanted to find something a little more reasonable that's why I went to Valley Yarns on webs website and it is in the raspberry rose colorway which I think is very pretty so it will it is number four in my six sweet hashtag six sweet sweaters very good what else is on your needles sis um Oh, and this is in this fun bag. Look at yep. that. I'm going to look at the label because I goof it up. Nick Knack Knits Co. Some lovely ladies from here in Wisconsin, I believe. And by yes. the way, Nikki has a podcast. Did I tell you that, Dawn? No. Yes, from Nick Knack Knits. She has a podcast. Absolutely. Oh, let's find the name and include it in the show notes. Abs yeah, I will. But and it's on YouTube. It is housing my Nicks. So this is a pattern by Melanie Berg, N-I-X-E, referring to mermaids. And this repeat I'm in now, I have to do, it's a 48 row repeat and I have to do five repeats. And I think I just am starting repeat three. But I am liking it now. I'm hoping it blocks out. I'm sure it will. Um, let me show you the two color of yarns because when you see them, you don't necessarily put those together as those are the two yarns that are in the um, yarn. This is the yarn um, she recommended, or it's the yarn she's wearing in the shawl she knit for her um, picture on her pattern. Um, Pasquale Bellage, I believe it's a German yarn. I have no idea what the colorways are. 
because I bought it as a kit. I'm sure the label said it, but I don't recall. And I am using a US-4 on that. So um, of course, I anything Melanie Berg does works for me. Um, I would say probably two on the frugalometer for the pattern. That is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. And then I always buy hers when they first release because you get like 20 or 25% off. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate that. And then um, the kit, <laughs> um, I don't know, probably goes three or four. I had to pay some shipping from overseas. <laughs> <laughs> so does that go into the frugalometer or not? Do I just use the yarn price? Um, and if the UPS guy's cute, that should, you know, do something that should take down a dollar sign on the frugalometer. Um, yeah, so that is uh, what I'm working on. I figured out if I do 12 rows a day, I'll be done like December 23rd so that we can do our Christmas Eve cast on. Now, if it's not done, I'm still doing a Christmas Eve cast on, but it's just kind of a little goal for me. So, and you know what, Penny, I have nothing off my needles. I don't either. Oh, okay. The only thing off on me is I am off my rocker. Other than that, <laughs> that's it. Oh, I guess that brioche blanket's off my needles. <laughs> <laughs> it is pending removal. <laughs> so um, can I ask what you learned then this week when you were doing that hat? Yes. Um, you know that Dawn and I are... Um, we're really not project knitters, we're process knitters because we're always trying to learn. And for those of you who have not done double knitting in the round in the way this pattern is written, as I said, you never knit the slip stitches. Well, unless you do knit the slip stitch. <laughs> and if you do, it attaches itself where you knit and your hat begins to pucker and it looks similar to this. And as you're knitting and knitting and knitting, such as anyone who knows me knows I do not check my knitting, I just knit. Hence, I have pockets that are off-centered, et cetera. <laughs> anyway, I noticed a pucker in this hat. And I thought, you know what? In the previous hats, I would frog it and start over. I am not frogging it. I am going to learn how to correct it. Because as we've said over and over, one of the most important lessons we were taught as knitters was learn how to read your knitting. If you can read your knitting and you understand the movement of the yarn and why stitches have an appearance that they do after they've been knit, you should be able to backtrack and figure out how to correct it. So I looked at videos. I could not find one on how to correct this. I could not find one. I looked and looked. Of course, anyone who knows me knows that my attention span for the internet is 2.1 minutes. That's about all I can handle. <laughs> and so um, I decided I'm going to deconstruct and figure it out. So dropped those stitches, laddered out the um, knit stitches, picked those up and figured out how that slip stitch works through the fabric in every row. And by golly, it worked. Took me about I'm guessing 45 minutes or an hour, but it's corrected. So that's what I learned. Sometimes you just have to be willing to deconstruct in order to construct. So I deconstructed and constructed or reconstructed. Very good. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. What about your lessons learned this week? Oh, probably not nearly as profound. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, for new viewers, I'm a paramedic instructor. So right now we're in cardiology. And the only reason I mention that is because here's what I learned this week. How is knitting like resuscitation? Yeah. So I, we, as paramedics, we spend a lot of time on resuscitation and how to be organized and step by step, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. But one of the things that they teach in resuscitation, and this would be for all levels of medicine, is to surround yourself with experts as soon as possible. And I was teaching that and I'm thinking, that is exactly what I did this week. So I've been struggling with my circular sock machine. I have a Earl Bacher Gearheart Speedster and um, I've just been struggling with consistency on that machine. So I, I knit socks. Um, I've been doing lots of Christmas ornaments lately too, but you know how you have ribbing 
when you hand knit socks, in order to rib on a circular sock machine, there's another piece of equipment you purchase called a ribber. And that ribber timing has to be right to make your ribbing look equal and even. Sometimes mine looks beautiful and sometimes it is not beautiful. And I try so hard to teach myself, but I'm, I haven't been able to work through the mechanics of that machine. So I do watch videos and I usually go to, to crank ins. <laughs> Isn't that a fun thing? <laughs> go hang out with crankers. Um, but because of COVID, I haven't been able to do that. So on one of their Facebook pages, I posted, would anybody be willing to teach me in like a Zoom one-on-one? -on -one? And within minutes, one of the leading teachers in the nation on Circular Sock Machine said, absolutely. So she goes, I only do an hour at a time because you'll be brain dead. So I'm thinking, I'm going to need an hour a week every week till the end of 2021. So I met with her. I was so excited. and. She covered everything on my list in 40 minutes. <laughs> so she, because of, here's where surround yourself with experts. I would hold up the sock that I was having issues and I was holding it about this far away. She instantly knew what I did wrong. It's like, don't you need to see it closer? No. <laughs> and then she talked me through the three things that were off. There's only three components of timing, I guess. All three of my components were off. I don't know how long it would have taken me to try to get all three of those working together. It took her about three minutes um, after, you know, probably nine months of struggling with it. So I'm just thinking we have to surround ourselves with experts. So if there's something you want to learn or something that you're struggle with, struggling with, don't hesitate to ask the knitting community. There are people out there that I realized are willing to help like that. And in the virtual world we're living in right now, um, it's probably one of the best things I think that'll come out of the pandemic. And that is our ability to stay connected um, when we can't face to face. So um, Miss Sue was an amazing teacher. Um, I'm sure in the future, if I have issues, I'm going to not struggle for nine months. I'm going to try to figure it out myself. And if I can't, I'm going to um, surround myself with experts. Actually, Don, that's pretty profound. Well, yeah, isn't it weird how you can do something in one part of your life and you're thinking, wow, that would work in this part of my life too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I like that. Resuscitation, fiber resuscitation. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, speaking of things we like, we like you, our viewers. So we want to thank you again for participating both in our Ravelry threads and in YouTube. As you know, this is an off week. We will have another gift drawing in episode 42. And this is going to be for our YouTube community. So during that episode, we will give you a prompt and we will ask you to respond. And I have a hunch one of those gifts may be the gifts given to us by, um, is her name Marsha Dawn? Yeah, Marsha Ward from the Felted Garden Etsy shop. Yeah. So do you want me to show those? Do you mind? Because no. I think they're beautiful. Now you don't get all three because that's the Google side of me, right? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get one. Go ahead, Dawn. So um, when we were chatting back and forth on Etsy, when we got done with our transaction, she says to me, so tell me about your podcast. I'm thinking... How does she know that we have a podcast? Well, the ladies from Flock Around the Table were gracious. And um, so she just gave us these to give away as gifts. So she's obviously an amazing seamstress as well. You really need to go check out her leather shawl cuff. So, and this is just a fun, the sheep are wearing sweaters. Look at that. <laughs> so a COVID mask and then some nice colors on the inside. I would like to try a mask sometime that has this sliding bead. I've not tried one of those. I would think they'd be kind of gentle on the ears. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then look at this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So that, that fabric is spectacular. And you probably can't see it, but it's glittery. Mm -hmm. And then you see it's boxed bottom. So you yeah. just open it up and look at that. So I could put a skein of yarn on that. Sure. I could put little accoutrements in there. You could. I could put chocolate <laughs> and then hide it. You know what I'm thinking? Would that act um, 
in some sort of resemblance to a yarn bowl. Yeah, I bet it would. That's a good analogy. And that yarn is sparkly on the inside too. And I know white blows out, but it's a white and silver. It's amazing. Now, and that wasn't all. Oh my goodness. Then look at this bag. Look at those sheep. <laughs> now I don't sew, but this is stiff. So does that mean there's interfacing in there? I would guess, yes. Yeah. And again, it's pleated bottom, which I just love because it sits so nicely. I'm thinking this next to your chair when you're knitting to keep your yarn in. I would be amazing. Complimentary fabric on the inside. She is brilliant as a seamstress. Oh, well, yeah. by all means, visit the Felted Garden Etsy shop. Oh, thank and you, Marsha. Whitestown, Indiana. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, mean, I guess that's a suburb of Indianapolis, but um, we'll put all of that down below. And then she did send Penny and I each a... Okay, I'm going to goof this up now. I think these are progress keepers. <laughs> no, no, these are stitch markers. You can help us out with that. Yeah, these are stitch markers. And one's a white sheep and one's a black sheep. So um, we'll have to, next time I see you or send you something, we'll have to. Yeah, but isn't that, that is very, she was very, very, very gracious. You guys, if you want to support her shop, that would tickle us pink and I'm sure it would tickle her pink. So and speaking of support, I just have to tell you that our bosom buddies, Miss Irene, Miss Joyce, and Miss Angie yeah. from the Three Ply Podcast have been such wonderful supporters for us. And those of you who follow them know, don't you just feel like you know those ladies? I don't do, yeah. No, just their, you know, their personality and such is just so welcoming. But anyway, we are having our December virtual knit night on December the 12th, which is a Saturday evening from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And last month, we encouraged all of our participants to join us in a cast on using one of Miss Irene's sock patterns. So if you go to Ravelry, it's Irene Designs. She has the row by row sampler and she has the shorty sock with a strong heel. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. If you'd like to join us, go buy her Etsy or her Ravelry shop, buy her pattern and cast on with us on the 12th. And do you know what? She is going to allow us to um, draw for gifts that she's giving. Oh, yeah. So we will explain how that giveaway works during the virtual knit night. And Miss Irene, I hope you know that we just love you and your kindness <laughs> and generosity is so humbling. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And for our returning participants, we can't wait to knit with you. It's kind of like a holiday treat. And for our new people, please look on Ravelry. The link will be posted about an hour before the event. If you are not on Ravelry, all you need to do is look down below in our show notes and email me and I will send you the information we use Zoom as our platform for the, the knit along. We'd love to see you. We have two guiding questions because our virtual knit nights are two hours of saturated talk about knitting. We, um, we want to hear and see what you're doing in your fiber adventures. So the first question is, what is on your needles or what's off your needles? And Dawn and I use the overarching, um, I guess, expectation that we have for all of our family events. Choose your own level of participation. So if you don't feel comfortable talking in front of people, you don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to volunteer, right? <laughs> um, you can just sit back and listen. And, and we don't mind. That does not offend us at all. So choose your own level of participation with question number one. Question number two is going to be something that's really more personal. So if you don't feel comfortable sharing, you don't have to. But the question is, what are your holiday knitting traditions? So we're looking forward to hearing about that. And just so you know, if you're unable to attend, you can always go to Ravelry in that thread for that meeting's virtual knit night. And after the knit night, we will upload 
all the patterns that have been mentioned, the fibers, the designers, the niche shops, the Etsy shops, um, even um, events. So if anything is mentioned, we try to take those notes and then compile a list for you so that you can go back and take a look at them. So once again, thank you so much, Three Ply Ladies. We love you and we look forward to knitting with you again this month. Yeah, very good. Yes. So I suppose in closing, we should probably hear the wise words of our sister, Nikki. Oh, yes. <laughs> and this month, she is really encouraging us right along the same lines as what Dawn and I have learned throughout the week. She says, and by the way, she too is a teacher. So the three of us are teachers. Teaching and knitting are amazing. We often learn from others in so many ways. Oh, what wow. a blessing. Yeah. Yes. And we would agree, Nikki, that um, we do learn from others and we learn from you. We just learn from you in so many ways. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us for episode 41. It's been a delight to meet with you and to knit with you. We're looking forward to seeing you in episode 42. And if you don't mind, Nikki would also say, subscribe and like us and share share us with a friend because she is our um, administrative, no, executive assistant. She does all of our uh, statistics for us. And that would be the last thing she would say other than we're hoping your week will be a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Thanks so much. And we look forward to seeing you in episode 42. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.